Hi, everyone, and welcome to my fall series. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. For this DIY, you're going to need one of these chargers from the Dollar Tree and one of these printables. Now that's a free printable I designed and it's down below in my description box below my video. You can click the link and it will take you right to it. And I'm using my Kills Primer again. I love the water-based Kills Primer. I have a lot of it and it tends to dry looking just like chalk paint. And of course it doesn't come off because it's primer. So I, I love using that and I'm just giving it one coat because I know that I want this to kind of look distressed and the center of it will be mostly covered. And now I'm taking some gray paint and I'm just lightly dry brushing around the edge to give it a little bit of a border. But the main border is going to be those little beads or bumps on the side of the charger. That's one of the features I love about the charger plates. And my Dollar Tree carries this all year round so they're easy to find. But I just dry brushed really lightly over those just to bring them out and try to leave the white behind so that you can see that they're little beads. You know, I didn't want to get it in the in between them too much I guess because then it would look like it was a solid design rather than individual little bumps <laughs> and you just saw me cutting out my printable that's actually a pumpkin seed printable from the graphicsfairy.com it's a free printable I downloaded it and then uploaded it into canva.com to add another background to it and create my own you know graphics and that's a really fun thing you can do so someone asked me how do you stop the ink from bleeding when you're mod podging you gotta wait at least one hour after you put something through your printer and preferably longer. I have better luck with three to four hours and of course if you can do it overnight and plan ahead that's even better. And then you use as little Mod Podge as possible. As you saw I just put a few drops down there just enough to get it to stick down and you dry it right away and that's your best kind of trifold attack I guess to try and prevent your ink from running. Once everything's dry you know most people want to seal it you use a clear varnish or a clear poly acrylic spray just something clear that doesn't yellow and you just mist it lightly with one spray let that dry and then do a second one really light let it dry and then you can go ahead and get really heavy handed with the Mod Podge if you want and you don't have to worry about your ink running because it's already protected and sealed in a thin layer of plastic. Now I have found I can stop after that spray. I'm perfectly happy. What I've been doing is just misting it once, then misting it twice and then my third spray is pretty heavy handed and sometimes I'll use a semi gloss if I want it to look a bit more like a Mod Podge finish and it's just easier obviously because you're spraying it's really fast you don't have to wash a brush after words or a sponge and that's another option it works fine all of my crafts have always held together but if you really want that thick plastic look then I would go to the Mod Podge so I glued some wood half beads around I think those are so pretty it just gave it that look I was going for I, I don't know what this look is I I love this look though I've seen it in other crafts and home decor in stores and I just love the color combos with the wood beads I just think it looks so pretty and I'm making what they call I think a messy bow and it's just scraps of, fa of like ribbon or fabric you literally just cut chop 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 any different lengths long medium small and you can finish the edges you don't have to finish the edges anything goes with these they're a lot of fun to make for that reason and they kind of drift I'm sorry, they kind of dress your craft up a little bit more without making them over fancy because sometimes the big bows, you know, even just a simple bow can make it look too fancy. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, if you kind of want to stay in like a rustic look or downplay it a little bit, but it's too plain without a bow. These are great options. You just kind of fan them out. And when you have the ribbon without the wire, like I do with the lace ribbon, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just tacking it down with a little small drop of hot glue and that keeps it in that nice spray formation and I left the top I thought it was kind of cute because this is a fall craft I kind of left the raffia there sprayed up like a pumpkin stem even though this isn't really a pumpkin it's a charger plate but it gives it that feel that vibe that's so cute for fall and now I'm just adding some lamb's ear for some greenery and I'm using the wood glue still, the wood hot glue with this craft, so the glue's a little stronger. Although my other glue is good too, but this is definitely stronger because I am planning to put this outside on my front door. And 
This is something I've done for 20 years. I put hot glue down, some masking tape while it's hot so the masking tape melts and it kind of solders everything together and it holds up against the elements outside and I love this. For this craft, you're going to need some paper or material in your choice, some cardboard, and some Dollar Tree shapes, or you can print them up offline. Now, now I would normally use Dollar Tree shapes, but my Dollar Tree, yes, for those of you that follow my channel, you know I have hole in the wall Dollar Trees. <laughs> I called and spoke to a very nice girl who told me they're not going to put the fall items out until next week and they will be done putting it all out by the end of August. So for me, that's a little too little too late. <laughs> so I want to show my international viewers how you can dupe the Dollar Tree stuff. You don't need a Dollar Tree. You just need some really good, thick quality cardboard. You can see I'm having a hard time cutting that. I had to use scissors and blades. And you can easily print pumpkin shapes off from online and trace it and do exactly what I'm doing. So for the stem here, I had to make shift a stem. And because I'm using wood glue, this is going to hold together really good. Plus you're going to glue either paper or material on top of it so you don't have to worry. But until my Dollar Tree you know, puts out all of the fall things. I still wanted to show everybody this really neat DIY to give you guys additional inspiration. Of course, if you have a Dollar Tree that already has the fall stuff out, just go ahead and use the actual pumpkins. Or if you really, really want to make it thrifty, you can use cardboard. Anytime I cover things with either really thick quality craft paper or material, I don't usually waste my wood or my Dollar Tree signs because I save those for projects where you really do need them. You know, they're, it's going to show and it's impossible to fake it, I guess. <laughs> Make it and fake it. But in this case, this DIY is going to be completely covered and the craft paper is thick. So when I glue it down, you're not going to see any of those lines. Now that's a concern with cardboard. If they have those little bumps and lines and grooves, you might like that actually. It can actually, you know, if you make them look like galvanized metal, it can go. But if you don't want those to show, you know, if you turn to tissue paper or napkins or anything thinner like a print, you will have to get either poster board and cut it and glue it on top so you have a smooth surface. Or, you know, like I said, you may not mind the lines. Pumpkin have those little lines. My pumpkins, at least in my pumpkin patches where they grow here, they have a lot of those little grooves and lines. So you might not mind that look. But if you do use the craft paper from a craft store, it's more than adequate to cover those lines, so don't worry about it. And of course, cloth is as well. So I'm just taking my craft paper. This paper is from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just cutting it out, as you can see, and matching up the little shapes and lines. And we're gonna make a really cute pumpkin formation. I absolutely love the Dollar Tree glue sticks for these kinds of crafts. You have to apply it very heavy, but you get a package of four for a dollar. So even if you used half a stick for one craft, you're still way ahead of the game. They're just so, so cheap. And they do work as long as you really use them heavy and thick and you can't miss any areas. So you can't just kind of rub it on there and then miss sections. You really do need to cover every part of the cardboard and rub it down but this gives a guaranteed no wrinkle, I guess, well, at least for me. Oh, I hope someone will come on and say, I did this with a napkin and it bubbled up. <laughs> if you put Mod Podge on top, you know, game's over. But if you do this and you just keep your glue really dry and, you know, you, so far I've never had anything bubble up for years. So I love glue sticks for that reason. They're a really great way to use to cover especially for holiday crafts because I make a lot of crafts so a lot of these crafts only stay in my home just for this year and then I'll either give them away or my family takes them but I make so many that I have to recycle so I you know 
for me, it's a great way to also to use your Amazon boxes or cardboard that you have sitting around. And oh, isn't that cute, you guys? Look at that. I just love <laughs> these little formations. I've seen them from high end stores, you know, and also just little craft stores where they sell these and I just think they're so cute and I don't have one yet so I wanted to go ahead and make one and I'm just covering them up and I'm just garnishing them with bows so I do that bow then I decide I don't like that this pumpkin is a lot heavier and bigger than the other two so I wanted his bow to be a little bit heavier as well and then kind of have that trickle down effect where the bows become you know less and then some weight at the bottom with other things besides the ribbon so I'm also using an old, I'm not sure what that's called. It's for candles. They go in the center, but I found it at the 99 cent store years ago. And all of the little pumpkins are chipping off, you know, that's on there, the little gourds, you can see it, they're a mess. <laughs> and so it's turning out to be perfect just to pick apart and use as extra embellishment for my crafts. And this is the magic trick here. I'm taking my time and I'm using the twine from Walmart. I love this twine at Walmart. I think I bought it. It was like maybe four something and I'm going on two years. I have used so much. And as you can see, I've got so much left. I don't know if this is ever going to run out. It is a great deal. So if you're at Walmart, make sure you pick some of that up because it's much better quality than the Dollar Tree. It's thicker and I think there's more for your money, a lot more. I'm showing you how I'm taking my time using a thin ribbon of glue and just gluing all the way around the edges. I do two rows on the bigger pumpkin because again, I want him to be a little heavier. And I'm using the Hawaiian skirt from the Dollar Tree for the raffia. That's a leftover leaf right there, a maple leaf that was metal from a pumpkin that I used last year for a DIY. And I'm just putting little wrapped curly cube wire in there and just basically putting embellishments and decorating it but nobody's going to know this is cardboard unless they pick it up if you just have it on a front entry table a kitchen window at the bottom of a mantle thick cardboard is good enough and as long as the sides are covered it comes across so expensive and nice so I'm using an extra piece of lath you can use a paint stick for this part I painted it white and now I'm just taking those little wooden cubicle squares from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to create a little stand for this guy so he can stand on his own. I'll be putting him at the bottom of my ladder that's next to my mantle in my living room this year, but he just came up so, so cute. And of course, you don't need a Dollar Tree to make it. For this craft, you're going to need some leather strips. And shout out to Melissa Garrett. She sent me a huge bag of leather strips. They're real leather. I, she said, do you want some? I said, sure. <laughs> I thought she was going to send me like 10. And I think she sent me 80. I have so many leather strips. Thank you so much, Melissa. And one of those little Dollar Tree round wooden disc. So I'm using some white acrylic paint. And I'm just giving this a nice, soft, airy kind of dry brush a little bit more than a dry brush but not quite fully painted just so you can see some of the leather colors through it i didn't want it a solid white and the texture on the back of the leather strap is a suede so it gives it a really neat texture that's actually the one i choose to put on the outside of this craft because i love the texture it looks so good in real life it looks velvety really really pretty and I'm taking some hot glue, and as you can see, I'm just gonna glue it down in this formation where the straps are side by side. Now you could do this with the Dollar Tree fake leather, but you would need to double up on them. So you know how the underside looks like cloth? You would want to take the leather ribbon and glue it 
you know, cloth side to cloth side so that they're both leather and that way they would be strong enough to hold this shape as well because we're making a little leather pumpkin, you guys. And it comes up so, so cute. Once you glue them all evenly down like that, you're just gonna pull them up and glue them on top of each other evenly as well. So as you can imagine, the underside that I'm pinching right now is a little thicker and that part doesn't look good. But you, you know, I'm gonna easily cover it because I had planned on putting a big pretty floral bow on top of it. But this is what it should look like when you're all done. And it's so fun making pumpkins out of everything nowadays. Have you guys noticed that that's on trend? everybody's making it out of everything you can think of I just think it's such a fun trend so I'm making a leather one and as you can see I tried some raffia because I thought oh that would cover it then I thought maybe a stem and no <laughs> so I end up settling on this this is some ticking stripe ribbon and some lace ribbon that a lovely subscriber sent me she sent me about three boxes and I think another one's on the way thank you so much you know who you are she won't let me say her name but I just have so much wonderful stuff to craft with so I don't know where she got the lace ribbon but when I take it out I am pleasantly surprised to discover it's like an elastic stretch ribbon so it kind of goes boing you know <laughs> when you pull it so it gives it this really neat textured look you'll see it when I'm all done when it lays on top of this pumpkin it gives a really neat textured look because it kind of springs back and wrinkles and crinkles it's really really cute and that ends up being more than enough you'll see me pulling it between the little leather straps there to cover and you know drape it down and cover the thicker part at the top of the pumpkin that I don't want visible and you could easily use the Dollar Tree lace ribbon for this I actually thought she did send me a roll of the Dollar Tree lace ribbon because she has sent me a few of those and so I was surprised because when I took the plastic off and then took a closer look, I thought, oh, <laughs> that's different. Super cute. And I'm making a little floral bow out of the ticking stripe ribbon. There's lots of videos on YouTube. If you just put DIY floral bow, it'll show you how to make this. You loop it around and around and you cut the center little cuts on either side. Sometimes it's a triangle, but when it's really small ribbon like this, I usually don't bother with the triangle because I'm afraid I'll cut through the ribbon. But when you're pulling the loops out, you pull them in opposite directions directions and you kind of twist them as you're doing it to help it spray out like in a flower and it just helps a little bit but the cloth ribbon never wants to totally spray out like a flower so I did have to work with it and tack it down here and there with some hot glue but this is what we have so far and then for the top I just decided to go ahead and use a little wooden half bead I thought why not I did it for my first DIY it was laying on the side by me and I thought this would be totally cute it would be like a little button but the energy that this little pumpkin had when I was all done was very vintage it almost reminded me of like a steampunk vintage little pumpkin. I don't know, but it came up so, so cute. For this craft, you're going to need the foam dice from the Dollar Tree, a piece of wood, I'm using the plank from the Dollar Tree, and some letter stickers of your choice. Now I'm using Craft Smart Acrylic White paint for this. I love that paint in white. It is so similar in coverage to a chalk paint. In fact, I think it performs the same. I do have to dry these thoroughly, and they dry really quick. It's a nice material to paint on for that reason. It's very porous and it soaks up the paint and dries really quick. And I do have to do a second coat in order to cover it enough that you can't see those little dots through anymore. And then I'm taking the color, it's an orange color called pumpkin. <laughs> it's actually called pumpkin. And I'm just sponging it on nice and light. Now it's a little brighter than I wanted. I would have liked a softer orange, but that was all I had. And I knew by the time I distressed this and dry brushed it, it wasn't really going to be that much of an issue anyway. So now I'm using my favorite color 
and I hope they still sell this. I saw it online. I don't know if it's some overstock thing, but it's Country Tan by Apple Barrel. They don't carry it in my Walmart. I have yet to go into an actual craft store and look for it, and hopefully you can buy it online, but I love that color for light distressing. That paint, I think I've had it for like 15 years. It's still going strong because I really only use it for light distressing, but it has a really unique mocha color that is not available in any other color in the Apple Barrel line or the Craft Smart paint that I know of. Now, there is a color by Waverly Paint that has that color, but someone told me they're stopping making Waverly. I hope so. someone in the comments told me if that's true. They've discontinued Waverly Paint because I thought, oh no, that's going to upset a lot of crafters. I don't know if that was just discontinued at Walmart or if they're just discontinuing Waverly. But if you can't find the Country Tan and Apple Barrel paint, you could use the brown color and you'll recognize it right away when you see it in the Waverly chalk paint. It would give you the exact same finish. And I just go over it with a little bit of white paint and then orange again and then white paint. I'm just, you know, those little foam blocks. You saw me put the Country Tan on. Then I took a little white trying to soften up the orange and it ended up making it look almost reddish. So then I went back over it with orange, but that's how I got the final look. And now I'm just using the antiquing wax. Most of them come in brown, and I did see one in gray once, but most of them come in brown, so any antiquing wax will work. You just use it to stain the wood, and you can leave the wood raw if you want, or you can paint it white. And then I use the little stickers to spell out the word fall. Now, as you can see, I have them set up this way, with the F and the L next to each other, and the A and the L next to each other. And I actually stressed about this, you guys. I went downstairs to get something to eat, and I kid you not, I think it took me three hours to make a final decision here, but I do end up moving the L's on the bottom and the F-A on the top. Let me know which way you like it better. But I think because it was coming up way cuter than what I had envisioned, I really wanted it to be perfect, and it just felt more balanced with the L's at the bottom. So as you can see, I took some more of that country tan paint, and I just dry brushed the letters a little bit because I wanted them to blend in. They were popping a little bit too loud for my taste. And I'm gluing the little foam blocks together. Now that's important if you make this craft. Make sure you glue the blocks together in sets of two first, because you see what I'm holding up there? That is a wine cork I had to slice super wafer thin because I did have to add it to one side so that they're not lopsided because the little cubes are not made perfectly uniform. You can't see it at all because it's a foam material and it kind of squishes over everything. So I'm pretty sure even a penny would work if you don't have a cork. But if you run into that problem, you can fix it. And then of course I glued those two cubes down on top of each other. And now I'm using the little wood piece from the Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure these are like little miniature birch wood pieces. Birch wood is really popular and I always wonder what they do with the smaller stems. And I think they're selling them off to the Dollar Tree because if you stay those little wood pieces up close, they have the same little notches, like the little marks. If you guys watch my video on how to DIY your own birch wood, you can see that I took pencil and made those little lines and these little stems actually have that so I'm pretty sure they're birch wood. I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure you know because it's still popular and they look really really cute. It's a great idea to sell off the little pieces that way you don't waste the wood and people can use them for crafts or for filling in a floral vase. I think it's a great idea. And so I made a bow out of raffia. I'm just adding that on the side and now I'm taking some more of the gingham print in black and white from the Dollar Tree and I made a little bow with that and that's it i'm gonna glue him down on top of this stand and i think he came up so so cute let me know what you think but this is one of those crafts i was making it and i wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out and again it was one of those you know where my husband saw it went ooh, it just came up so so unexpectedly cute
If you had fun today and enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that like button. And as always, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.